<laughs> there you go. It is amazingly peaceful out here this morning as the campground slowly awakes. Sun is coming up over on the horizon. Ducks are flying and landing in the water. We are going to make beef. Say it. <laughs> Say it. Beef bourgeonneau. Beef bourgeonneau. I have a hard time saying it, but I can make it. <laughs> We departed Maggie Valley, North Carolina, and headed east to our next destination, High Point, North Carolina. We had reservations at the Oak Hollow Campground, operated by High Point's Parks and Recreation Department. Oak Hollow Campground is open year-round and offers campers the opportunity to relax in the beauty and serenity of the great outdoors. Located within the 1,550 acre Oak Hollow Park, many of the campsites border the scenic shores of Oak Hollow Lake. There are 107 RV sites with full hookup and 13 tent platforms. site at the Oak Hollow Campground. You can see it's pretty unlevel. I've got the front of the Airstream up almost as far as it'll go and the back bumper is almost hitting the ground. But the view that we have and of the lake is just beautiful. We are going to make beef. Say it. <laughs> Say it. Beef bourgeonneau. We're going to make beef Bourguignon, beef stew, and red wine. Beef bourgeonneau. I have a hard time saying it, but I can make it. <laughs> so the first thing that we do is um, take our bacon and we're going to cut it into lardoon. Lard, lard, again, French word. <laughs> I'd have to see it spelled. Uh, L-A-R-D-O-N-S. Lardon. Lardon. That's just simply the French um, way of cutting it into small pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I am making the Julia Child version. Her recipe is my favorite. I'm halving the recipe. The recipe calls for six slices of bacon, so we're gonna be doing three. Uh, that's because my, the only um, container that I brought that I could cook this in, a Dutch oven, that fits in a camper oven, is small. A full recipe would not fit. So we're doing a camper version. So I'll get this cut up into the small pieces. Now what's that pan that you're using? This is a, a Cuisinart um, Dutch oven. I and don't know what quart size it is. I can probably, we can probably look that up. We can look at it and put that on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. But what, what's that Dutch oven made out of? Cast iron and then coated with ceramic. So it's very heavy and it works great on the stove top. And then you can put it right into the oven, which is what we'll be doing. We'll be sauteing all of our, our vegetables and our beef and the bacon. 
and then we'll be adding the liquid later and putting it in the oven for a couple of hours. So this, this pan works great to move from stove top to oven. Paper towels are super handy in the camper. We go through a lot of them and they work really great. It's a quick way to get your hands clean without having to wash it constantly. The next thing I'm going to do is prep the stew beef. And I made this last week as a practice run. And so I did um, already chop all of the meat into cubes. And then I froze what was left so that we have it for this. It doesn't really matter necessarily the, the cut you get because the process of cooking this, it's going to be two to three hours of, in the oven, so it gets really tender. And then I just cut it all up into cubes. But what I'm doing here is putting it on paper towel because you want your beef to be really dry. We're gonna be sauteing it in oil. And so we want it to brown, not boil. <laughs> boil is bad. So I will get these all laid out and probably have to change out the paper towels a couple times to get it good and dry because they were frozen. All right, the water is boiling. So we're gonna go ahead and add our bacon into the water. We're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for 10 minutes. The bacon timer just went off, so we're all ready to strain the bacon. I'm gonna use a strainer that we have in the camper. They work great. They're collapsible, so they fold up. This is a small one, and then I have a size bigger. I'll have Jim put a link in the um, description below. So we're gonna get the burner off here, and then we're just gonna drain, strain this. Water goes out. Smells really smoky in here with that bacon. <laughs> We're going to be sauteing the bacon first, so we need to pat this dry also. So I'm just gonna dump it out on the paper towel, spread it out here. And just pat that, get it dry. Then I'm gonna dry out our pan because we're just gonna use the same pan and just add oil now and start our sauteing process. The one thing with these pans is you do have to remember they are hot. So when you're using it on the stove, the handles are hot. So you better have the hot pads handy when you're manipulating the pan. Light the stove again. I'm using avocado oil. And the recipe calls for olive oil. I don't have any. We pretty much always use avocado oil for everything. So we're just gonna add some Oil to the pan, let that heat up for a second or two. It says to do this until it just starts to lightly brown. So we're gonna watch it close. So the bacon is just lightly brown. We're gonna go ahead and get it out of the grease. Um, the idea here is that the oil and the bacon grease are gonna be what we saute the, the beef chunks in. We're just gonna set this aside and then begin browning the beef. And that's gotta be done in batches. We don't wanna overwhelm the grease. If you put too much in, then everything will um, just boil and it will not saute. So we're just gonna set these in individually in here. Gotta get the burner back on. And we need to keep moving these around so that they don't stick.
once they get coated with the oil all the way around, they do, um, do not stick. You can see they're starting to brown. This is going to seal all the flavor and juice into the beef. Remove it from the oil. We're adding it right on top of the bacon because it's all going to go in the stew together at the same time, so it's okay. And then you just repeat it again in batches till all of the meat has been browned. So that comes out and we're gonna set that aside and now we're gonna put the carrots and onions in and get those sauteed. We'll break up the onions. Look at that yummy browning is happening just from the caramelized pan. A little tender, then we're going to deglaze the pan even further by adding the wine into the pot and that will bring off all the rest of it and make it into a good broth. Yummy. <laughs> I feel so French. I feel so Julia Child. I can't do her though. Time to light the oven so it can get preheated. Now what's that in the oven right there? So this is a stone. Camper ovens are not very even heated. So this is supposed to help maintain more of a even heat all the way through the oven. So I think we have these available. Um, we could put a link to these in our description also. I'm gonna push this and turn this on. Turn that to pilot first, right? Get it set and then push that in. Push it in? Yeah, that's what starts the gas. Okay. And the pilot light should be lit now, right? Yeah. Now, can you keep holding, now, is it still lit? Yeah. Okay. So then turn it to the degree. And, and then the oven lit. will fire up. There it's lit and I'm going to set it to 450 to warm up for our initial steps of making the stew. And if you want to take a look at what's going on in here now, everything's really nice and the, trans, uh, the onions are becoming translucent and that's about where we want to start adding our other things in. So we're going to add the, ba the bacon and the beef back into the stew. Stir it together. You can see why I have to do a half batch because we're two thirds full and we still have to add liquid. Definitely the perfect size for two people. Now we add some pepper. We like the fresh ground. And Himalayan salt. Probably can use any salt, but they like Himalayan. And a tablespoon of flour. I'm not going to measure this. Really just going to sprinkle it over. And we're going to toss it with the flour. Just to kind of get it all coated. Shut the burner off. We don't need that on anymore. We're going to place this into the 450 degree oven uh, for four minutes without a lid. Hey Siri, set a timer for four minutes. Time to take it out of the oven. It's been in for four minutes. We're gonna pull it out. And we're just going to stir it again. And we're gonna place it back in the oven for four more minutes. The next step is going to need garlic. 
we're going to be adding the broth and the wine and the garlic. So I've peeled one clove. If you have a garlic press, that would be perfect. You could just press it even with the peeling on uh, right into the pan. But I don't have a garlic press. We got rid of a lot of things when we moved into the camper. We have very minimal utensils. And so I'm just going to use the edge, the side, the flat side of a big knife. I'm just going to lay it on to the garlic. I've peeled it, like I said, and then I'm just going to pound it like this a little bit. And that smashes it, and then I can sort of chop it to get it smaller, like that. And I'm going to prep the wine. The recipe calls for three cups of wine. Um, like a Chianti, we don't have Chianti on hand, so I'm going to use um, a Cabernet Sauvignon. And I'm going to half the recipe, so we're going to put one and a half cups of a good bowl of red wine. So basically one serving. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then it will also have beef broth. You can use any kind of uh, beef broth and I'll be adding that in when we pull it back out. Four minutes, the second time is up. We're gonna remove this. We're gonna turn our oven down to 325. And I think I'm gonna go down to 300. I made this last week, as I mentioned earlier, to do like a test run and to see how it worked in our oven it burnt. <laughs> it was so sad. Um, we still, it was very good. We still ate it, but it was um, dry. Oh, it got overdone. Do you think maybe having the recipe, having a smaller size, had something to do with that? I do. I think that a bigger, you know, a bigger container with double the amount probably would need longer to cook. So I did not take that into consideration. This time we're we're hopefully uh, making the right corrections to have it turn out. We're gonna let that oven cool down a little bit and we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. achieved our simmer. I'm just stirring it one last time. I did want to just mention too that when we added the wine, because the pan was hot from being in the oven, that deglazed the bottom of the pan. You couldn't see it happen, but I could feel it happen when I was stirring. All of that yummy caramelized um, flavor came off the bottom and sides of the pan and now is part of the broth. So it's part of what makes the really delicious um, rich broth of this t particular dish. So we're going to shut the burner off, put the lid on, and we're going to put it in the oven. I'm going to set the timer for about an hour and check it. I just want to make sure that we don't lose all of our juice this time, and if it's still looking good, I'll probably add another hour. It's going to go in for a while, we'll let it do its thing, and we'll check back in on it. One of the really nice things about this dish, too, is if you look, there's really not a lot of dishes, which is important in the camper because you don't have a lot of space. You don't have a lot of counter, and so you need things that are, even though this is a little bit labor intensive, it was not a lot of dishes. Julia Child's recipe calls for pearl onions, additionally to the onions, the sliced onions that we have already put in the stew. We've made it in the past with the pearl onions and Jim and I really don't care for those, so we leave those out. So, but part of the recipe is you boil those in broth, in beef broth, with some fresh herbs. So you get the flavor of the fresh herbs in the broth with the pearl onions, and then you saute mushrooms. You remove the herbs after the boiling happens, and then 
the pearl onions and the mushrooms get added to the beef stew. We did saute our mushrooms already ahead. They were sauteed in butter, so that's the best way to do mushrooms, and they'll be ready to just go in the stew. I had a little bit of beef broth left, so I'm going to throw these herbs into the beef broth and bring that to a boil and let that simmer a little bit while we're waiting for our stew to be done. So I'm just gonna drop those in so we can still get the fresh flavor. And then you have to do the dishes. Little space. You can't leave things sit around. We strain off the broth so we get the flavors of the thyme, the fresh thyme, and the parsley. The timer went off. Um, it's been in the oven an hour, so we're gonna pull it out and take a look and see how we're doing. We're doing this mostly just because I'm still learning about what our oven, um, how, it, how hot it is. So we wanna make sure we don't burn it this time. So here we go. Oh, that looks pretty good. There's still quite a bit of liquid in there. Oh my goodness. That is looking yummy. Um, so I think we probably could do another hour. That would be two hours. There should still be some good juice left in that. What do you think, Jim? Or should I just do half an hour? I, look, I, think it, I think it'll take another hour. I think the lower temperature is the ticket. Okay. All right, so we're gonna put it in for one more hour and then we'll see what we have. While the beef bourgeonon is in the oven, I thought I'd show you around a little bit of the park. We're at Oak Hollow Campground in High Point, North Carolina. We had no idea it was as gorgeous here or there's this much to do. But one thing, if you come to this campground, just be aware that the campsites are pretty darn unlevel. I wanna show you our setup over here a little bit, what we had to do, and I don't know if it'll show up much on video, but uh, kind of right there, you can see I'm just about fully extended on the front in order to get this thing leveled front to back. And we did use our beach lane levelers um, to get leveled side to side, and that worked really well. It wasn't too bad. It was just a couple of inches off. And this is not even one of the most severe angled campsites in this campground. Let's look around. I'll show you. We're in section C, and this site right here, C2, actually is very slope front to back. It dips way down in the back and then even down further in that back corner. And we, in fact, while we were cooking the beef portion on, we kept looking outside because somebody was trying to come in and park and park into the site and was having some real issues getting back into there. In fact, he finally realized he couldn't and there was one site left up in campground A over on the other side and that's where he decided to go. But I wanna show you a couple of these sites over here that are just absolutely stunning. Um, this one here looks like it's got about the same leveling issue, although not as severe as the one we just looked at. Um, in fact, if we look back from here, I don't know, let me zoom in a little bit. If you can kind of see how much that is off level. You can see how much that dips right back there. But uh, let's keep coming along. This is site C4, which is actually quite a pretty site as well. And these sites um, are angled in such a way that you have view of the lake. And this is Oak Hollow Lake. Site C6 right here is just another really nice site that gives you a nice overlook of the water. Now, one thing too about this campground is that the water spigots that are available, pretty much everything has electric and water in this section, but the water spigots, one feeds every two campsites. So you need a Y adapter and they've got Y adapters on almost all of them, but not all of them. And some of the spigots are actually quite a long way from where you would hook up. But probably one of the most premier campsites in this whole campground is this site right here, and this is C8. And the view that you get from this site is nothing less than stunning. I mean, look at this, look at this right here. You'd park and you'd open up right out with this look of the lake. You've got your picnic table, which is set right over here. You've got lots of ducks that come visit you. 
But look at this view that you'd have every day, either to sit in your own bench, your own chairs, or even just out your windows. What a gorgeous, gorgeous view this is. And also from this site, you can see how close we are to this. But of course, our doors are facing the opposite way of the water. So we don't have any view of the water from our campsite other than through those kitchen windows. And coming out of C8, there's C9 here and C10, which are pretty decent sites. But again, they're sloped quite a bit, just like our site is from front to back. You know, the natural watershed of the water here. C11 is a very attractive site as well. And they built it up in the back with this wood berm. And that's, I kind of want to point out, you can see it from here. This is the bathhouse right here for this campground. And it's very nice. They do have a soda machine here if you enjoy that. But there is a washer and dryer that are, I want to say coin op, but they're not coins. They take credit cards. And that's all set up right there. And hopefully we're going to be doing laundry there in a uh, little later on today. It depends on how quick that beef portion on cooks and what happens. There's this beautiful dock right here you can walk out and see. And in fact, I was out here the other morning and did some video at the sunrise. It is amazingly peaceful out here this morning as the campground slowly awakes. The sun is coming up over on the horizon. Ducks are flying and landing in the water. And there's a light mist over the water right over here behind. Just an absolutely peaceful, beautiful morning. I just got a text from Michelle. She's pulling the beef portion on out of the oven. We got to get back there as quick as we can so we can see how this is coming out. I don't know if you're getting hungry, but the smell in the camper is just phenomenal. And uh, I can't wait to try this again. Oh. Smells so good in here. <laughs> oh, nice. Still have liquid. All right, so our next step is to strain the liquid off of the stew. So we're going to do that by pouring it into this colander. Now this time I'm using my bigger collapsible colander. So I did need both today. Drain all the juice off. Look at that. Okay, I need to try a piece to make sure it's tender. Let's see. Well, wait a second. Mmm. Oh, 
Oh, it's so tender. All right, then we're going to put this on the stove and I have this here. And we're just going to let it um, simmer. We're going to simmer the sauce to uh, condense it down and make it a little thicker. And then we'll be adding this back in. I mentioned there earlier that the Julia's recipe calls for pearl onions and mushrooms, sauteed mushrooms. We won't be adding the pearl onions because Jim and I don't care for them. And we will be adding the sauteed mushrooms, which we've already done that in butter. So those will be added. And then I will also be, I should probably add this in right now, or maybe just at the end, I'm not sure. This is something I did kind of on my own. I took some broth and put the herbs in it and let it simmer so that we've got the essence, the oils and the flavor from the fresh thyme and the fresh parsley. So I'll be adding that into the stew also right at the end probably. So it's at the thickness that we would like it, so I'm going to shut off the burner and we're going to add the mushrooms into our stew. And I'm going to add this the herbal broth that I prepared for that aromatic flavor with the fresh herbs. back together, our thickened broth. And that thickened up just from simmering. We didn't add any additional flour or anything in there. It was just, just needed to boil down a little bit. And it says to simmer for, oh, what is it? Three, three to five more minutes and our stew should be done. And then we can taste it. Are you excited, Jim? <laughs> But the, the, the smell is just phenomenal. Michelle's doing the cleanup as is continuous. When we cook in the Airstream and it's boiling away and we're waiting for a couple minutes, but we had a question for you. Do you like videos like this? Do you like this type of cooking video in the Airstream in an RV? Is this something you'd like to see more of? If it is, leave us a comment below and let us know. If you hate this video, give it a thumbs down and let us know that too. We really appreciate your feedback. Thanks for watching. So what do you think? How's it look? I think it's done. I think it's time to eat. Time to eat. After mm, what? Three hours, basically. Something like it took, took about an hour and a half, I think, to prep. I think you need to plan an hour and a half to two hours to do all of the steps, the cutting of the vegetables and the prep work, and and then however long it has to be in the oven, which it was two hours. So this has been about a four-hour process today, yeah. but it is going to be worth it. I hope that you like this video and hope you try this recipe. It is time consuming but there's just something you can't replace flavor wise when you cook slow and low There you go.